Abolition. Abolition. Today, the labor system that took shape in the late 19th century developed coercive means to ensure that cotton remained king. It was called convict leasing. Get arrested on a minor charge or a trumped up charge, you could find yourself locked up and then hired out to a corporation bidding on inmate labor. The pipeline from prisons to profits in this country has deep roots. The aftermath of slavery was in some ways worse than slavery itself. Unlike before, when someone who owned you, driving you too hard was counterproductive because you would lose your investment. Convict leasing was different. You could get them cheaper, and if you actually drove them to death, there was more where that came from. In the 13th Amendment, which ends the institution of slavery, of course, there is a loophole. Convicts who have been convicted of a crime, they actually can be forced to work for free. In Alabama in 1850, 99% of the people who were incarcerated were white. In Alabama by the 1880s, 85% of the people incarcerated were black. So we could have a debate about how many of those black people were actually innocent, or we could have a conversation about the use of the criminal justice system to target both the innocent and the guilty alike. That continues all the way to the present, where even today, about just under 40% of the nation's prisoners are black, and yet the African-American population is about 13%. They are snatching up bodies everywhere to fuel this system. The idea in which more money can be made out of their incarceration is still very much part of our criminal justice system. Um, I think uh, if one of the things with the 13th Amendment, as with any other provision, it needs the people to step forward and embrace it. And right now we have a very explosive social movement, powerful social movement that's resonating across the country, the Black Lives Matter movement. I think the 13th Amendment is an ideal vehicle for that. People don't tend to think of it because of the victory of the enemies of the 13th Amendment in limiting it to its historical purpose of eliminating chattel slavery. But it's sitting there waiting to be grabbed. Does it matter you want to add anything before you? I agree. <laughs> uh, yeah, it, it's. I, I think that there are so many opportunities that that amendment does. Uh, that it, it opens many doors. Uh, I think what has happened in the past is that because our Supreme Court changes from generation to generation, uh, we we go back to square one. And, and I think that perhaps if there was some other mechanism to make these changes and it would be great, but it seems that that is the only way because we're talking about a constitutional amendment. But yes, it does become problematic. Well, you know, I would tell the gentleman to read uh, Abraham Lincoln, who's also cited in my book. And Abraham Lincoln praises the framers of the Constitution, many of whom were slave owners, and he knew it. And he said, because they could not resolve this issue there and then. They left it to their progeny to do it. And that's what the Declaration of Independence does, as I've explained in my books too, as Abraham Lincoln explained over and over and over again. The same men who wrote and adopted the Declaration of Independence, which talks about the, the, the natural rights, the unalienable rights of the individual, not just white men, not just men, not just whites, but every human being set the stage for at some point the abolition of slavery. This is Lincoln's position, it's my position, it's really the only rational position there is.